Well, I think CUDA is the biggest hurdle for sure. And then uh, from there, it's probably product roadmap versus product roadmap, uh, meaning everything NVIDIA, everything AMD does, can NVIDIA do better by six months? And we are really in like a six month race right now, which means that NVIDIA puts out the H100, AMD puts out the MI300, which beats the H100 big uh, a, quite a bit on memory. And then NVIDIA puts out HBM3E, and then AMD puts out HBM3E. So it's six months apart. Um, product roadmap, though, like I said, I think AMD has that uh, ability. And where they could potentially circumvent CUDA would be in a few different ways. One is that uh, an R&D department like OpenAI, working with a framework like PyTorch, they have been attempting to circumvent CUDA because it locks in pricing power too. Mm. And then the other issue is, can does big tech really need CUDA or can they, with all this custom silicon that they put out, whether it's TPUs, Tranium, um, Apple, clearly a lot of custom silicon there, um, can they uh, create... Do they have strong enough engineering departments to circumvent CUDA? Pro probably if they needed to with PyTorch as the framework, Meta, for example, um, being able to work closely enough with AMD's GPUs. And the reason, so going back to what the other risks are, I would say it's a risk and an opportunity. And the thesis in a nutshell is that an AMD GPU costs ten to $15,000. It costs 10000 for Microsoft. 15,000 because they buy in bulk, 15,000 for others. NVIDIA's GPUs will cost 30 to 40,000. So that incentive of saving, you know, 20,000 or more is big enough for these companies that are building these huge data centers that they're likely to uh, try their very best to make this work with their in-house engineering departments. And now that's big tech only. This will not apply to enterprises and small businesses, which won't have that time or engineering resources to do anything other than CUDA.